Now, at Battery Day, they went into a lot of details about the batteries for the cars. Elon has long said that he thinks the energy portion of the business, which is currently sub 10% of revenue or so, he thinks that will eventually rival. Did they give you any insights, extra insights there about how they're going to apply this technology to Powerwall, to Powerpack, to Megapack, et cetera? Yeah, so they didn't focus too much on uh, on the energy and grid side. And I think it's just because they're just doing so much with vehicles and the opportunity is so big there that um, that's where the focus is. But then if you look at the kind of atomic unit of Tesla and like their core technology, it all goes back to that battery cell. Like that's the same kind of battery cell that they're going to eventually be putting in all their energy storage products. So all these improvements in making the battery more sustainable, easier to produce, cheaper, more reliable, more efficient, all of those things are going to work their way back to the grid business. And what it means is if your power wall costs 6000 dollars right now and only stores this much energy now it's going to cost four thousand and store twice as much or whatever eventually and so i think we've like tesla to me if if, if i what i think is actually going on is they've like a stack of 50 projects of all these people who want batteries and they just like can't even get to it because they're literally just giving all their batteries to model y and Cybertruck and and thing and they want to scale their car business to 100 billion to 200 billion and that is just on the table waiting to be tackled from a 25 billion dollar company then and like i said their their biggest constraints their battery and once they do that then i think we're going to start to see them focus and i just think it's kind of elon's like Tesla's culture of getting pumped and excited on the next thing. And like investors shouldn't like wait for that energy business to give them value right now, but they should start to think in 25 as this automotive business matures, where does this next leg, leg of growth come in? Where does all this hard work on the engineering and battery side, where does that value, the next phase of that ba- value being realized, it's on the grid. And you know, you think about if we have a million electric vehicles driving around today, what if we have 50 million? We're gonna need a lot more grid stability. We're not need a lot more renewable energy. The grid's gonna need a lot of work to be able to sustain this influx of new massive batteries and power draw essentially. And so um, I think it's gonna take decades to really reinvent the grid. Actually, I have one more piece on this rant really quickly. The solar roof, I think this is so exciting. Like uh, to just think about the opportunity of Tesla, like go on the street and walk around. Every car is not electric. You're like, okay, that could be a Tesla, that could be a Tesla. And then you go look at the roofs of the houses and you're like, these guys are all paying a hum- couple hundred bucks a month to draw energy from the central grid. And I'm literally looking at the sun hitting the roof and they're not doing anything about it. And then they're plugging their Tesla in half the time to that same grid. And so I just think this this really simple opportunity of go outside and look at how much energy is hitting our cities that we're not collecting. Tesla has been refining the, the roof technology and the solar panels commoditized, but the ability to install that quickly and productize that install and make sure we capture all this energy that's hitting us that we're not using. I think that's just such a huge uh, sort of new white space opportunity. A roof is going to cost 50 grand. That's as much as a Model 3. I mean, this is going to be a really big business um, too, but I just think it's just all down the road and that's why they didn't focus on it. Yeah, that will be something that I'm really excited about, especially now that they have transitioned to their differentiated selling model. I can tell you that I have solar panels on my roof and three years ago when I was researching them, I I put my bid out to Tesla. Tesla was one of the highest uh, of, of all those that I have. From what I see now and their new new model to selling, where they're basically basically small, medium, large, choose your own adventure, where they're in one day and get it out. Now, through that, they're going to be, they might be the low cost producer by far uh, and their marketing advantage can definitely help them do that. So I am personally interested to see if that transition uh, pays off. One last question before we go to Q&A because we only have a couple of minutes left. You've been studying this company for a long time. What do you think is the biggest misconception that people have about Elon Musk? That he is a billionaire or entrepreneur or some just rich business guy. This dude is just the coolest, chillest, smartest down to earth nerd. He is just a hardcore engineer nerd who is in it for the right reasons, who doesn't give a shit about money, who literally just likes, just loves, he just engineers all day. He loves building rockets, building cars, making things that make him excited about the future. And then that's why he has this huge passionate following because I get up every day and I love my Tesla. It brings the biggest smile to my face every day. When I see it, it's running on clean energy. The fact that we're shooting these rockets up, Starlink might come out. Like, I just think that's the biggest misconception is that like deep down, it's just a nerdy, technological kind of amazing moment of science and engineering and one of the greatest inventors of all time in humanity, literally in real time, inventing all this awesome stuff we get to use. And, you know, I think that's, that's just what's happening. And that gets a lot of that gets lost. Yeah. And I think just the, by the nature of the businesses that he's chosen to be in, he gets a lot of political uh, ire from from people, not to mention the fact that 
automakers have been historically terrible investments and he has, you know, if you could go back in time and buy Tesla at the IPO, you are now up, I don't even know how many uh, times in value, but boy, did you have to endure a lot of pain uh, along the way to, to, to get that. So yeah, to, to me, Elon was already rich and he bet everything on, on, on Tesla and, and, uh, and SpaceX. So I, I think the fact that he is in it for the mission just rings true to people that, uh, that, uh, that believe in him and, uh, wanna, and wanna see his company succeed. I think that that is such an undervalued asset is the people that he has, the evangelists really that he has, has cultivated uh, is such a big advantage for, for the company. Right. Um, yeah. And, and it's like for every single cell in those Wall Street spreadsheets, not one of them mentions the why behind the company, which is why every investor and customer love their products. And that's the secret sauce that has been their competitive advantage and why nobody gets it. And it's, you know, but yeah. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. You're preaching the choir there. Wow.